This is a lead or lag compensator. It's a fundamental block in control systems and with proper tuning, it can help achieve control specifications like transient response, steady state response, robustness, and stability. It's characterized with a zero at Z, a pole at P, and a gain K. If the zero is right of the pole, then it's a lead compensator. If it's left of the pole, it's a lag compensator. More about compensators will be covered elsewhere. Here, our motivation comes from the need to simulate a control system with a compensator in the time domain. So our objective is to obtain a time domain equivalent representation of the compensator C of S, that is a state space model. Our approach involves taking the inverse Laplace transform of the transfer function to obtain the linear time invariant or LTI state space system. Let's apply some algebra. Group terms of u and y on each side. Distribute, apply inverse Laplace, and get an ordinary differential equation in the time domain. Now we want to write this ODE in the LTI form above. Notice the ODE has the input U, just like the LTI system. But the ODE also has the derivative of the input. And the same goes for the output Y, Y dot on the left-hand side. Also, there's no state variable. So there's not a clear path to the LTI form, and we discard this approach. Now consider the compensator is the product of two transfer functions linked by the state variable x. Transforming x over u to state space, we get the ODE in terms of x and the input u. And now y over x. Inverse Laplace. And we obtain y, but with the derivative of x on the right hand side. However, we know x dot. Substituting gives y as a function of x and u. This is in the desired LTI form, and if there's no mistakes, it should be a time domain equivalent to the compensator. Another way we could approach this is to recognize that the compensator can be separated into the sum of two terms. Then simplifying, we get that C of S is the sum of a strictly proper portion, the first term, and a steady state term. Then for the input u, each term provides an output, y1 and y2 respectively. So we'll take the Laplace transform of each starting with y1 over u. Here's the first term, expand, transform, and get an ODE in terms of the output component Y1. Now the second term. Simple. The output component y2 given input u. And the ODE from before. Now, the compensator output y is the sum of y1 and y2 given input u. 
We write this in the time domain and then substitute y2 for k times u to get the system into the desired LTI form. We've determined two state space forms of the lead or lag compensator. The eigenvalue between the two is the same. The difference is in the output equation and the control input matrix B. We expect both state space systems to provide the same response to the zero initial condition. Here's a lead compensator with values inserted. Based on our work above, we need to verify that each state space system provides the same response as a compensator transfer function. Here we are in Octave. We're gonna create the lead compensator in the example with this script. This will involve the transfer function and both LTI systems, and then we'll visually and quantitatively compare the results. So we're gonna clear all, close all, load the control package because we're in Octave. If you're in MATLAB, you'll need the controls toolbox. And then poll zero, gain. The transfer function is first defined with the function TF, and that means there are two inputs, the numerator, the coefficients of them, and then the denominator coefficients. We're making two state space objects according to what we created earlier, the A, the B, the C matrix, and the D matrix for the first state space system with the first approach, and then a second approach that also yielded a state space system but with different B, C, and D matrices. And then we use step to compute the step response of each system. The output of step is the response y and the time vector t. The input to step is the system, whether it's a transfer function or state space object. One is the final time. And 0 0.05 is the resolution that the data will come out in. So everything in steps of 1 20th of a step. And then here's a plot to compare the step responses. And finally, beyond just by inspection, visually confirming agreement, we compute the norm of the difference between the transfer function and each state space system. This is the square root of the sum of the difference between the transfer function and state space system at each time step squared. Now we run the script. Here's a step response versus time for each system, the transfer function and both state space systems. Now by inspection, everything is on top of itself. The markers are overlaid. And in the command window, we've printed out the errors which are zero or at machine precision. Lead compensators are used in glide slope control. In automatic aircraft landing, there's a desired glide path that's specified by a radio transmitter. An aircraft needs to follow that glide path. That is, the distance between it and the glide path should be minimized. And then at a certain altitude, the aircraft needs to reduce its rate of descent, so a flare path is used, ultimately to a safe touchdown. In section 1.6 of Flight Control Fundamentals, we introduced the glide path control system architecture. But therein is a lead compensator, specifically here shown in the velocity control loop. This is used to compensate for the slow throttle response. Section 1.6 will analyze this system with time domain simulation, thus requiring a state space form of lead compensator that was developed in this lesson. This is quick concepts in control number three, lead and lag compensators in state space form. A sincere thank you to my patrons for your support. You make this channel possible. And thanks to all for watching 
access this lesson and more at learngnc.com.